So the question I get asked a lot while I travel across the country and in um, literally hundreds of emails on a fairly regular basis is, so what do you mean by progressive Christianity or what is progressive Christianity? I think it's important to know that there, um, there really is a history. Um, it's not um, something that uh, Jim Adams, our founder, thought up in 1994 or um, that's been created, uh, as some people think, just in the last couple of decades. I think it might be interesting to know that uh, progressive Christianity actually has a history that goes back um, over a hundred years. Um, there was a group of theologians, uh, seminary presidents, uh, uh, well-known clergy that um, were part of what a group that called themselves progressive back in the end of the 19th century, the very beginning of the 20th century, and included people like uh, Rauschenbosch, uh, Gladden, Matthews, and probably the most famous was uh, Henry Emerson Fosdick. He and many others were passionate about rethinking what was Christianity with all the new natural scientific evidence and with what was the beginning of true biblical scholarship in the uh, late and um, uh, 1800s and the early 1900s. Fosdick was absolutely convinced that if our understanding of Christianity did not somehow align itself with the scientific and, and uh, scholarship that had been done, even in those days, that we, we would fail, that Christianity would die and go away. Where we are today is not a whole lot different, quite frankly. Um, for us as an organization, progressive Christianity means um, that uh, a person is willing to take a look at the best scholarship, whether it's science, uh, theology, uh, Christology, and um, be willing to examine where they are and, if need be, change their thinking about what Christianity is today. One of the things that we have found that uh, is challenging for us today is there are still people who are dealing with what they call progressive Christianity, but what they really mean is they are taking progressive political action, but their Christology and their theology has not changed very much since maybe even uh, the very beginning of their own entry into a Christian path or Christian belief. Uh, it's a little challenging for us, but you see, when we look at progressive Christianity, we realize there's a very wide spectrum um, all we ask is that someone is willing to examine the best scholarship, whether it be biblical, whether it be uh, scientific, uh, whether it be theological, and, and somehow be willing to make a change or adjust uh, their thinking about what is Christianity because of this. And anyone that's willing to truly examine with a rational and open mind in our mind is progressive and that means it's that you can find people that are moving along the the spectrum and i'm not trying to do a higher lower um, hierarchy here but i am suggesting that it's uh, that does lead a, a lead to a wide open space for people that can call themselves progressive and do the center for progressive christianity started in 1994 as i mentioned uh, and now we call ourselves ProgressiveChristianity.org. We really do have a focus on theology and Christology. Um, we, we really do believe that is the essence of the challenge, just like our predecessors in the 19th century believed that if they didn't rethink those two things, that we would become irrelevant. And so our focus has been to try and take the best scholarship that we can find and rethink our ideas about what is Christianity and in the process reconstruct a new type of Christianity that fits not only what we now understand about who Jesus was and what Jesus was, but also our understanding in the context of uh, 21st century. Our belief is that um, Jesus gave us a path and therefore 
by calling yourself a Christian, you are someone who is intentionally practicing that path. Our assumption is that what Jesus was trying to teach us is that if we follow that path with great intention, if we practice it, like someone might practice the piano or a violin or some other instrument or some sport, uh, we would then have the ability to have the, some of the same experiences that Jesus had of the divine. By following that path, our relationship with other people changes dramatically. Our relationship with all sentient beings changes dramatically. Our relationship with the environment changes. And in large part, it is trying to learn how to dissolve boundaries between us, to get rid of what I call a dualistic mentality, where we see the other as something different than ourselves and begin to see divine, sacred, godness in all things. Um, some people call this panentheism. Um, I'm comfortable with that term but it does mean a change for most of us in our attitude and where we are. I believe the, there is a spirit. Uh, I do believe that there is something that is greater than we can possibly explain or understand, and it is our attempt to, to actually experience that mystery that Jesus was trying to teach us to do. So it's a path. We walk, we follow, we teach. And I think this is best done in community, where we are responsible to other people, where we can look at how we have functioned. I think we can look at the way we have lived our lives, make changes when we need to make changes, and learn there is another way to see reality, another way to see the world that can change the world if there are enough of us to live this way. It's time people are interested. It's a spiritual path and we are doing our very best to create curriculum, education, articles, liturgies that will help us all do this together.